made my clip-in hair extensions. Now, these aren't something I would wear every day, these are just for special occasions, for a costume maybe, but they're really fun and you'll notice when I do clip them in, they add a good four to six inches to the bottom of my hair, albeit scraggly. I am gonna take them to a salon and have them cut and shaped and styled into my own hair so that they kind of blend a little bit better. Now I did purchase the plain hair quite a bit longer than I thought I was gonna need it because like your natural hair, the extensions are gonna thin out and get kind of scraggly towards the bottom. So you're gonna want to account for that, especially if you're gonna want it just to be full all the way through so you can just trim off. I'm probably gonna end up trimming off that much because it's just garbage. The reason I made these myself is because I was shopping online and it seemed like I could get twice as much hair for the same price if I just bought the regular, plain, not color treated, not bleached, no clips, plain old weft of hair that you would purchase to do your sewn-in hair extensions. Also, if I were to purchase them pre-dyed, there's a chance that the color wasn't going to be quite right and I was just going to have to dye them anyway. Now, these are natural hair so that you can style them, bleach them, color match them to your hair. I would not recommend synthetic hair. You can't um, treat it with heat tools, you can't style it the same way, it's just... I bought the hair myself and I'll show you briefly but I'm not going to go into detail. I did bleach it and then I hunted it to match my natural hair and then I deep conditioned it after that. So it is quite a bit of a process but in the process I ended up saving roughly $175 if I were to purchase the same amount of hair for pre-made, pre-dyed, color treated hair extensions. So I saved quite a bit of money and it was kind of a fun project. Here are all the supplies I'm starting with. I have my 26 inch bundle of Virgin Remy hair, it's black. I also have aluminum foil, a glass container, my bleach and developer, and my hair coloring brush. Start by mixing your bleach and developer together. If you're inexperienced at bleaching hair, make sure you give yourself more than I did so that you're not gonna run out halfway through. Mix everything together thoroughly, don't leave any clumps because that will impede the developing process. Next, lay out your hair two layers deep over your aluminum foil, and this is going to help you bleach everything really quickly at the same time. You need to work as quickly as possible, otherwise parts of your hair will bleach too much, and parts of them won't bleach enough. So I started from the tips of my hair and worked my way towards the roots so that it would match my natural hair, which is lighter at the ends and darker at the roots. And then I worked my way through everything with the brush thoroughly and then with my fingers to make sure that all of the strands were completely saturated. If not everything is saturated with the bleach, you're going to have sections that are patchy and don't bleach at all. So make sure you really get in there and coat everything as thoroughly as possible. Check it, double check it, and then keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't lighten too much or fry the natural hair extensions. After you've bleached the hair, you'll want to deep condition the hair and then let it sit for a day or two to kind of rest and recuperate. Then you can dye your hair using whichever process you prefer. I just hennaed my hair the same way I hennaed the hair that's on my head. Wash, dry, and brush the hair and you'll end up with something like this. You'll need scissors, also your weave thread. This is made for actual sew-in weave. You'll need a needle with an eye that's large enough to fit your thread to sew it on. And of course, your clips. I got a pack of 20 of these for $3 on eBay. Next, you'll need to measure your different tracks. The first one I'm doing is going to be directly between my ears, and it's gonna run over the back of my head and start and end an inch behind each of my ears. Then I'm going to double that over so that it will be twice as thick. Only do this if you have thick hair. If it's too thin, it will show through. Then cut that off of the rest of the bundle. Make a loop at the opposite end and then cut through that loop so that it's not going to leave a big bulge in your hair that will be really obvious when you clip it in. And next you're ready to thread your needle. So you'll want to thread your needle and then position the needle in the middle of your thread. Then grab the ends of the thread and tie them to each other in a knot. This is going to double up your thread and make it twice as strong. Now you're ready to start sewing the wefts together. Of course you've got all of your wefts doubled up. So you'll want to line up the ends with each other and then make sure you're sewing through the part that is stitched. If you're not sewing through the part that is stitched, your needle is just gonna slide right out, things are gonna get bunched up and really weird and it's just not going to work. So you'll sew through both pieces, go over the top 
and then back under the bottom, over the top, and keep sewing in a loop so everything lays flat together. Then once you've sewn through the entire length, as you're doing your last stitch on the end, don't pull the loop completely tight, leave a little bit of a space, and then sew your needle back through that same loop. Then you'll want to do a second stitch over the exact same spot, Again, leave the loop a little bit open, and then sew your needle back through that loop. And this is going to create a knot that's going to secure everything. Next, you'll want to measure your next section roughly an inch above where you measured your last one. And this is going to keep everything properly spaced, and that way you know exactly where you're supposed to clip each thing. Then clip that off of the rest of the bundle, double it up, and make sure you snip through that loop at the opposite end. Then you'll just want to repeat the exact same process with each of your pieces, stitching them together so that they're doubled up. And then another one an inch above that, and yet another one an inch above that. The second to last one should be the widest one because it's across the widest part of your head. And then once you've cut out and doubled over your main pieces, you might have some extra left over. So with my extra, I made these extra five pieces. The largest one is just a little bit smaller than the first piece I made, and then I've got a couple of three inch pieces and a couple of one inch pieces. And I can just use these to fill in on my head wherever I want a little bit more fullness. And once you have all of your pieces doubled up and sewn together, you're ready to get your clips out. And my clips have this little rubber thing to keep them from sliding out of your hair. The rubber thing is supposed to face the weft when you sew it on, and the comb is supposed to face your head. So the weft goes on this side, and then the comb will slide into the roots of your hair against your scalp, and then clip shut. So this is how I'm placing all of the clips on all of my wefts of hair. And some of them I could just leave two like on that one or I could just add an extra one in the middle to make it sit more securely on my head. Um, this one's a little bit longer than that one so I could actually put four on that one but I think I'm just gonna leave that one with three. So space out your clips ahead of time so you know what's going where and then you're ready to sew all of the clips onto the wefts. And you'll see that your clips have several holes all over them. I'm not going to use the ones on the side, I'm just going to use the ones on the top. And I'm going to sew these on exactly the same way I sewed the wefts together. So I'm going to sew through the stitched part and then through the holes. And I'm going to sew through each hole at least twice, maybe three times. That way everything's going to hold securely. And then I'll finish it off with the exact same type of knot that I finished off with when I sewed the wefts to themselves. And this is what the finished weft looks like with the clips on it. To put them in my hair, I brushed out all of my hair. I put a little bit of heat protectant in. And then I did a part running horizontally across the back of my head, leaving a section at the nape of my neck. I put in my heat protectant and then hairspray on the roots. I backcombed the roots to give the clips a little something extra to hang on to. And then I put the track in, lining it up with the part in my hair. Then I closed the clips and put heat protectant over all of the hair, including the extensions. And then I heat styled it all together to help integrate the extensions into my natural hair and let them blend in. Then I did the next section about an inch above where I did that first section, the same way I had measured out my extensions to fit onto my head. So that way you know exactly where everything's going to line up, you know it's going to be the right length, and it's not going to peek out of the edges of your hair. So I repeated this process, doing everything in one inch sections, working from the nape of my neck up to the crown of my head, and I curled everything together. After that, I comb through everything with my fingers to loosen up the curls and give it a bit of a beachy effect. Then I teased the roots out to make sure that everything looked full and fluffy and to cover up any spots where the tracks might be showing through. And this is what the extensions look like in my hair completely finished. You can see they add a little bit of length to the bottom. I do have pretty long hair, but this just goes to show that you really need to overestimate the length of your extensions when you put them in your hair. But for the most part, what I was focusing on with these was to add a lot of fullness to my hair, and I think it accomplished that. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, and subscribe.